So, New York state law dictates that if you get a tax refund, you gotta spend it on something dumb. I guess that means I broke the law because I've never done anything this smart in my life. All right, so this is the Mezco King Kong of Skull Island giant action figure. I don't even, I think it's 18 inches, I want to say. This is essentially going to be the same kind of looking figure as we got with the uh, seven inch version, but uh, there's some differences that we'll go over, but I want to show you the box because it's pretty cool. It's like a, this separate piece around, looks like wooden crate with like little evil Kong eyes sticking out looking at you, ultimate Kong figure. Age is 17 and up, so not for kids. So, you know, if you're under 17, don't buy it. I'm kidding, you can buy it. Buy whatever you want, as long as it's, you know, not gonna break your bank account. Oh, wow. This is, uh, this is not a lightweight figure. Oh, oh, this is good. This is real good. All right, due to the substantial size of the figure, it is strongly recommended that you do not display on surfaces above three feet high. So yeah, keep this guy off the Empire State Building. Um, I think we all have seen what happens with that. So here is this Ultimate Kong out of the box. And I gotta tell you, I am pretty impressed here. This is largely the same sculpt, the same appearance, pretty much the same figure just scaled up as the uh, seven inch Mezco figure, but there are some noticeable differences, mostly in articulation. Um, I guess they didn't feel they had to add like a lot of articulation to a figure this size. It would have been nice to have it, but you know, back when they first showed this off, it didn't have any of that articulation. So it's not like I expected this one to. So as I look at Kong, I believe he was advertised to be about 18 inches tall. And as I actually get the ruler out here, you're looking at closer to about 19 and a half, which, hey, I'm not mad at that. The bigger the Kong, the happier the captain. So I'm gonna approach this a little differently. I'm not gonna review this in the same way as I would like a Marvel legend or a wrestling figure, or, you know, something like that, Ninja Turtles, whatever, because uh, there's really not a lot to talk about in terms of articulation here. As I mentioned at the top, this figure, I don't think people were really looking for crazy articulation. I think mostly Mezco was just going for an awesome sculpt here. And I mean, I can tell you firsthand, they achieved it. This thing is really, really impressive looking. There's some shading in the fur and some different uh, like color. I don't know if it's dry brushing or washes or whatever the case, but you do get a like nice blend of like tan, gray, brown, and uh, you know, some darks in there too. You do get some slash marks on the chest here, as well as like one big one on the chest can kind of see that there a little bit more clearly. So here's the head that he has out of package. Now this is not included with the seven inch version, although you can get it with the black and white exclusive seven inch version, um, but this isn't on the standard release. But you can see they got really cool detail in the eyes. There's like orange coloring in there. With a scale this size, Mezco was able to like get a lot more intricate paint detail in there. And I think it really shows. There's some great blending of all the textures and stuff where the gray kind of fades into the brown of the fur. You've got like uh, some slash marks on his eyebrow and under his eye and uh, around the mouth and everything too. The teeth are really well done. They actually have like kind of a gloss to him. I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up on camera, but it does look like he's got like moisture inside of his mouth, which I don't know, maybe he's uh, salivating at the thought of, I don't know, and Darrow maybe? Tell me what you think Kong's so happy about. One of the other heads he comes with is the angry roaring head, which is similar to what the smaller version came with. Uh, largely the same sculpt, just up resed a little bit. This one has like a lot more detail in like the gum work and the teeth have like some interesting shading going on where it's like darker at the top and as you get down towards the tips of the teeth, they're a little brighter. Very cool. The inside of the mouth is detailed, so much so that Kong appears to have cavities. Not a toothbrush big enough for him, I suppose. Same detail in the eyes too. You can see a bit of like gloss, which is really well done. You've got like the orange and uh, black in the pupils and everything. So I really like the sculpt. I really like the paintwork. I think it looks great. And then last you get kind of just his stern, regular, uh, I don't know, kind of neutral expression where he's uh, not angry, not growling, not really snarling or anything, just kind of doing his thing, walking around. But yeah, not much to speak of in terms of like the mouth detail on this one because his mouth is closed. 
but they didn't take it easy on the paintwork with the eyes and stuff. It's still got the gloss in there and it still looks great. And he's still got the uh, scars and stuff on his brow and around his face and everything too. And there's actually one over here too, which as I look at the other ones, yeah, he has them on all the heads too. So yeah, really cool. He also comes with two open gripping hands as well with like some scarring and paintwork on them to make him look bloody like he's been in battle or dragging his knuckles around on the ground or punching rocks or whatever it is Kong gets up to on an average day on Skull Island. Um, you can see here, nice giant holes in the wrists for easy swap out. And again, I believe these are pretty easy to swap out. I haven't tried it yet, but we'll give it a shot. So I just swapped this hand on over here and couldn't have been easier. You basically just pop this off, comes off really easy, pop this one right back on and you're good to go. Yeah, it's really easy to swap these on actually. So I'm happy about that. I know um, with the seven inch Kong, he had some issues and like um, mine actually broke out of box. I had to fix it. This one, I don't feel like that's gonna be an issue because they're not using a solid plastic. As it stands, this thing already has some substantial weight to them, but if he was solid plastic, forget it. This thing will weigh like 100 pounds. And to switch the head, same thing. You just pop it right off because of the giant size hole, the peg being as big as it is, it's pretty easy to swap. So again, just pop it right back in, same way as you would with the smaller figure. It just fits right on there and you're good to go. Simple. All right, so as I mentioned before, there's not gonna be much in the way of articulation with a figure like this, but uh, we'll go over what it does have. As you saw, the head just pops on. It's on a little ball peg where you can get some decent up, not so much down because of his chin and his like beard thing, kind of like stopping that from happening. But as far as up, you do actually get a pretty decent range up, as well as obviously it will swivel on the peg, so you can get some expressions out of him that way and it does move side to side. Now it's not the easiest thing in the world to move that peg around just due to the size and kind of, you know, you're fighting against the plastic and everything too, but you can actually get them to like look in different directions, which is, you know, that's, that's about what you need out of a head. At the shoulder, it does spin the full way around, as far as I know. Yeah, you can get it there. It's the size of the shoulder ball joint itself, plus the type of plastic, it's more of a, um, I don't even know how you would describe it. Like, it's not like a straight, like, resin plastic. It's more of like, um, I don't know, like a softer plastic, I guess. Like, you know what I'm talking about if you ever handled something like that. But basically, you do get some range to it, which is nice. Uh, I don't know if that's a ball joint. I think it's just a ball joint in there. Might be a swivel, I don't know. So you will be able to get a little bit of range out of the arms, but nothing too crazy. Maybe the other one's better. Actually, yeah, the other one is a little better. So that's cool. And again, same thing. So yeah, the other arm actually is a little bit better in terms of just the range you can get out of it. I think it's because of the way that his arm is posed. Like this one is more bent. The shape of this arm is like more bent. So I think you'll actually get a little bit more posing options out of the straighter arm. But uh, you know, you can get twisted at the shoulder. Now there is no bicep swivel, there's no elbow joint. So you're pretty limited there. The hands, as I've mentioned, they're easy to swap on. They're on a ball joint, which Due to the sculpt, it doesn't give you a ton of range in the hand, but you do get a little bit of motion out of it. So, you know, that's what you're working with. In the midsection, you do get like a cut just beneath like the ribs, the chest area. So it's like a little diaphragm joint. Not probably gonna get you a ton. Oh, actually not. The diaphragm joint does get you forward a little bit, which is nice. And it will get you back also a little bit. If I can move the arm so you can see. You get a decent curve at the diaphragm joint going back. Going forward is about like that. That's probably about as far as you can push it. You do also get a little bit of side to side. So if you want to have them leaning over one way or the other, that is an option for you. So it is a ball joint. I don't know if it's like a double ball peg in there or what, but you get enough of range of motion as well as a twist. So, you know, again, with this combined with the head articulation, you will be able to get them to look in different directions and kind of pose as limited as it may be you can get some poses out of them. So down to the legs, I'll try and move the arm here so we can see. It's very similar to the shoulders. So it's limited, but it's there. You can get them to twist around, spread out a little bit. It seems like it's just a ball joint, kind of standard. And um, you know, nothing crazy, no great, awesome range of motion, but it's enough for a figure of this size and for what this figure is trying to do. Same on the other one, although mine is, it's not stuck, it's just a little, tougher to move, but it can be done. And at the feet, as far as I know, I believe it's just swivels, maybe, at the ankles. Uh, actually, no, there's like a little bit of a ball joint 
thing going on in there, but I don't know, nothing too substantial, but basically this guy's pretty much just gonna be standing there anyway. So basically this is everything he comes with. Um, just two extra hands and two extra heads. So combined total of two pairs of hands and three extra heads. That's it, that's all you get. Um, it would have been cool if they included like upscaled versions of the accessories that came with a seven inch one. So for example, the seven inch one came with an Andaro that he could hold. He came with some uh, braces with chains around his wrists from when he broke free from uh, you know being on display in New York City. And just a couple other smaller accessories too. Like I think he had a stick or a tree of some kind, as well as um, the exclusive version had like a skull that he came with of like a, another dead Kong relative, basically pretty much. But uh, this one, very basic, very bare bones release. You're essentially, you're paying for the size and the sculpt. You're not paying for a whole lot of customizability or accessories. As cool as it would have been to have all that stuff, um, I think for a lot of people, they just want to put this on a shelf and be able to just like have it be a striking centerpiece to their Kong collection or their monster collection or whatever it is. So, you know, again, I didn't think it was going to come with any of that stuff. So it's not that I feel like I'm cheated out of it because, you know, the smaller version comes with all that. So I do have those accessories for my other version of Kong, just not this one. Speaking of the smaller version. So here he is with other Kongs in my collection. We've got the Peter Jackson 2005 from SH Monster Arts. We've got the NECA most recent, like classic version of Kong. And this is the Mezco 7 inch version, which is basically just this same figure, just shrunken down. Or, well, actually this is the first one that came out. So I guess this would be the blown up version of that, I guess. Putting these two aside for the moment, you can see the definite similarities between the Mezco Smaller Kong and the Mezco Larger Kong. Basically, same exact sculpt, same exact look, especially when we put that other head on them. Let me do that now. So yeah, here's the 7-inch version. There is the 19-inch version or whatever it is. And you can tell lots of similarities, basically the same thing, but uh, smaller, larger. More articulation, more accessories, more of a display, more of a showpiece. But yeah. Definitely some differences in the way the eyes are painted and stuff too. As I look at the smaller one, the detail in the eyes is not quite what it is in the bigger one. Same with like the teeth and everything. This is by no means, this is not a slight on this figure. This is a very cool figure. I did a review of it some time ago. Um, I also reviewed the NECA one. So there on my channel, I'll pop up some links up there. So I'm not here to like tell you which one of these is better necessarily. It's just kind of down to your preference. Like what are you gonna use your figures for? Um, me, I'm just a giant Kong fan, so it's not about what I'm gonna use it for, it's about where am I gonna put it because I'm definitely buying it. So here's something I haven't dug out in a while. This is the Jack Specific 2014 Godzilla, the giant size one or whatever it was. Um, I did a stop motion with this and a little review of it back on the channel some time ago when it first came out. You can check that out. I'll put a um, little link to it up in the top. But uh, something I didn't really expect was how good these two look together. Um, obviously these are both sizable figures with very limited range of articulation, but in terms of just standing out on a shelf like these guys are huge they're both sculpted really well kong in terms of his paint obviously is much better than godzilla because he's more of a premium figure and godzilla's just kind of got some he's got some good paintwork to him don't get me wrong this was like a 60 dollars figure when it came out compared to kong which is uh more than that but if you just kind of want to put these two on a shelf together where they're just staring each other down or if you wanted to have them like both like on opposite ends of the shelf, like staring out into your room or whatever the case, like you could do a lot worse than this. Um, I know this guy got re-released, I believe for King of the Monsters as well. So I don't know what his price is looking like these days, but if you got this Kong and you want a Godzilla to pair him with, this is probably the best option. So apart from that Godzilla, you're probably wondering like what else could you pair this with? And your options are pretty limited, honestly. Psych, just kidding. See, the thing about the original Kong in the original movie in 1933 was he was between 18 and 24 feet, depending on what scene in the movie you're watching. Which, if you're going by that, that puts this Kong in scale with basically every action figure you probably have in your collection. So, here's a Mezco Batman. You got the NECA Ninja Turtles Shredder. We've got the uh, X-Men Marvel Legends Cyclops. You've got Street Fighter Storm Collectibles Ken. And, of course, Vader. So if you're asking purely in scale, what does this Kong go with? The answer is pretty much every six or seven inch figure you have in your collection, which added bonus, you know, that Godzilla that I showed earlier is really cool if you want to kind of do a Godzilla versus Kong thing. But if you just want a Kong that's going to be kind of in scale with all your other figures, like you're not going to run out of options with this big guy. So personally, I think this is cool. And if you're wondering, yes, if you have, let's say, a six inch action figure, he can just hold them in his hands. I mean, it's not like a perfect grip or anything, so she's a little loose in there. This is some Buffy the Vampire Slayer figure. But uh, 
yeah, if you want Kong to terrorize whatever facsimile of Andero you might have in your collection, whether it's a Marvel Legends or a, you know, NECA figure, whatever the case, go ahead. He'll do it. Say he won't. Dare him. So, overall, I would say go for it. It's an impressive showpiece. Now, make no mistake, that's pretty much all it is. You're not going to get a ton of articulation or range or anything like that out of it. It will look good with other figures if you can find a nice enough place to set it up. And obviously it's going to stand out and be a really striking piece of your collection if you're into Kong or, you know, Kaiju or any kind of giant monsters or any of that kind of thing. So for me personally, yeah, this was a no brainer. I'm such a big King Kong fan that like as soon as I saw this announced some years ago, I was like, yeah, I'm buying it. And, uh, you know, at the earliest opportunity, I did. Now make no mistake, this is not a cheap purchase. Like I said, I just uh, got some tax money back, so that pretty much was my excuse to do this. But it is like a $250 figure. I got it for about $220, because Big Bad was, I think it had it a little slightly cheaper than uh, retail. And that's not an endorsement for Big Bad, I'm just telling you what it is. They're not paying me, so, you know. Buy it wherever you want, I guess. But yeah, I mean, unless you're a big time Kong fan, you could probably do without this figure, especially if you got the smaller one, because the smaller one will give you more range of articulation and more, you know, accessories and different things like that. Or if you want the NECA version, which is another figure that I've basically never been able to shut up about because it's awesome, that's a great figure too. But if you want a Kong that's going to look like an absolute menace with all of your other figures, I can't think of a better one. I mean, I know Mezco has done um, previous versions of Kong that are much larger. I think they did a Peter Jackson version back in 2005 when that movie came out. And uh, I don't actually have that one. I missed that figure. I had the chance to buy it and I just didn't. And I kind of regret missing out because, you know, it's Kong. I need it. But yeah, as far as sculpt, um, the detail work you're going to get, if you're into photography or anything, you could set something cool up with this and not have to like do any kind of tricks to make Kong look bigger because he just is much bigger. Uh, this isn't even like any kind of awesome setup or anything. This is just something I put together with what was laying around and yeah, this would look cool on a shelf. So would I recommend this? Um, the answer is yes, but under the following conditions. You have to be a giant Kong fan and you have to have pretty decent amount of like just expendable income that you don't care what happens to it. So in my case, tax money, like I said, got some tax money back and was just like, all right, here's what I'm doing with it. That's going to be the end of it. Um, anything other than that, you might be pushing it because, you know, like I said, 250 bucks is a very hefty price tag. You see the size of the figure you get. Like, these are regular six-inch action figures, and that's Kong just about to ball through them all. So, yeah, he's sizable. If you're not somebody who thinks you need a giant size Kong, then you probably don't. If you're on the fence and you watch this review trying to determine if you wanted to buy it or not, hopefully this review helped you out. And, um, you know, let me know what you decide. You know, leave me a comment. Say, hey, I bought this. Thanks for the review. Or say, nah, I'm going to pass on that. I don't need it. Whatever the case. You know, whatever you write. Whatever you type. Share the video. Like, subscribe. Do all that kind of stuff. Anyway, thank you for watching this. My name is Captain McKay. King Kong fan extraordinaire, I guess. I don't know. It's a self-appointed title. So somebody's going to be in the comments telling me I'm not a big Kong fan at all for some reason. All right. We'll catch you in the next one. Later on.